Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Good Monday morning. A little rainy here at the Jersey Shore. That's okay. That's okay. Weather not looking great for the entire week. Looks like there's going to be rain at some point every day. Again, okay. Not a problem. Got lots of work to do inside the house. I have no excuse. I don't want to, you know, I won't be wishing I was out in the sun when I'm doing the work that I need to do. Also more time for reading books and what else do I, binge watching some television. Probably won't binge watch television, but I have a visitor coming this week. My cousin from Tennessee scheduled to come and stay with me for a few days. Her son is graduating from boot camp for the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard, one of their main hubs is in Cape May, New Jersey, which is about an hour from me. So she's going to come and stay for a few days. Supposed to be getting here on Thursday. So I'm very excited about that. Very excited to show her the Jersey Shore, show her around my little town that I love, my little slice of heaven. And uh, we will head down to Cape May on Friday to watch her son graduate, maybe see some of the sights in Cape May. As we all know, if you have not been there, Cape May, one of the most beautiful places on earth, certainly one of the most beautiful places at the Jersey Shore. So looking forward to that. I need to get my soapbox out a little bit this morning because I saw this after I had finished my podcast on Friday. And I was quite irked about it, I have to say. There was a survey that came out about dad shaming. I guess they waited to release the study in time for Father's Day. Yeah, they say that, you know, a certain percentage, a very high percentage of men feel like they're dad shamed, and it makes them not want to be involved in their kids' lives. Really? Okay. Welcome to women's world. I'm not even a mother, and this outrages me. Are you kidding me? Moms get shamed all the time. All the time. Now, how would it feel, or what would you think of the mom that said, yeah, all this mom shaming just makes me want not to not want to be involved in my kids' lives? What would you think of that mom? But yet it's okay for dads. Not only is it okay for dads to say that, but they were kind of making it like, You should stop shaming the dads because that's why they're not getting involved in their kids' lives. Like, it's our fault. It's our fault that these fathers don't want to get involved in their kids' lives because they feel some shame and some guilt about some of the things they are doing or not doing. Yeah, let's let the guys off the hook. Let's say that it's okay. You do whatever you want, and we're just going to say that's okay. As long as you're in your kids' lives, whether it be negative energy or you know, uh, even worse, you know, dangerous, abusive energy. You do what you need to do as long as you don't feel bad about yourself. Are you freaking kidding me with this? Oh, makes me so angry. Makes me so, so angry. So to the ladies who still think that women have all of the same rights and privileges and are treated the same as men, one glaring example Not true. Still have a long, long way to go. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. But that really made me angry. Dad shame. Please. Probably what I need to do now, and this is why I had mentioned binge watching earlier. Uh, An article came out based on a study that binge watching friends can help ease your anxiety. And they really say that it's, you know, any of these ensemble cast shows, they mentioned Big Bang Theory as well, because what they do is typically the episode starts out with, you know, somebody or numerous people in the episode having some sort of problem. And then with the help of their friends, they're usually able to find a solution to that problem before the half hour is up. So they say that binge watching these types of programs 
eases your anxiety because it gives you a sense that everything will be okay, just like it is for the people in your favorite TV show. They come to some kind of conclusion at the end of the show. Everything's wrapped up in a nice little bow. We know that life does not work that way, but we watch it over and over and over again, and it makes us feel like it can work that way. Sometimes it can. Sometimes it can't. But if you're feeling a little blue, feeling a little down, all stressed out about some issues and problems that you're having, binge watch A Little Friends. Netflix has it. In fact, I was looking for something to watch over the weekend on Netflix, and uh, that was one of the first things. Oh, Friends, the entire series. I was like, wow, I could sit here and watch Friends for a week straight and probably not move off the couch. I didn't, but maybe someday in the future, maybe in January when it's cold and snowy and I don't have anywhere to go, I'm going to sit down and snuggle up, have my best girl next to me, my girl Tucker, and we'll binge watch some Friends from season one to season ten. Such a great show. Gosh, I love that show. So much fun. Okay, I'm going to move on to the topic. And the reason that I chose the topic today, my sister, that biatch, and her family are in Hawaii. I never thought in my lifetime I'd be able to get to Hawaii. Now, when I say that, I, I, I'm talking about when I was growing up up, you know, in my younger years, teenager, 20s, whatever, I, I think I'm going to get to Hawaii myself at this point. I think I'm going to get to go where everywhere that I want at this point, but a few years ago, I would not have thought that. So, my sister's living it up in Hawaii. She's having a little bit of an issue at the hotel. It's The hotel is not what they thought and hoped it would be. She said it's kind of a dive. I told her that a bad hotel in Hawaii is still better than most hotels. Am I right? I am right. So I thought I would ask, where is your dream vacation? So my sister obviously super pumped about being in Hawaii. She's there with her husband and her two daughters. And um, my niece Samantha was posting pictures yesterday from her uh, surfing lessons with her big longboard. So, uh, uh, you know, take advantage, man. That's what it's there for. That's what you're there for. Do everything you possibly can. Can't wait to see pictures from the luau. I'm assuming they're going to go to a luau because that's what you do when you're in, in Hawaii. That's what the Brady Bunch did. So that's what I expect my sister and her family to do. So I wanted to know from you, where is your dream vacation? There are so many places that I want to go. I've always said that, and Hawaii was one of them. I, I've said to my husband, you know, for our next big, huge trip, which is God knows when, I want to either go to Hawaii or Europe. There's so many places in Europe that I'd like to see, always on the top of my list. France, Italy, Austria. Um, those are probably my big three in Europe. Well, Greece. Joe and I were talking one day, and he wanted to do Ireland. I'm sure Ireland is beautiful. I'm not opposed to going to Ireland, but it's not on, like, my top of my list. Um, so we agreed – to uh, maybe shoot for Greece. I hear Greece is amazing. And Mykonos. Want to go to Mykonos. But lately, I've really been into going to Australia. The problem with Australia is it takes you like a day and a half to get there. That's also one of the problems with us on the East Coast going to Hawaii. It takes so long to get there because we typically – have to fly from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, where have, what have you, over to California, and then we have to get in another plane. My sister, I'm not sure if she got a direct flight or not, but she's in Dallas, so it's not as far of a trek from Dallas to Hawaii as it is from the East Coast to Hawaii. Um, but yeah, Australia, I'm just hearing such amazing things about Australia. And the cool part of, about Australia is their summer is the opposite of ours, so it's like a great place to go in the winter time when you're in the min- middle of your, you know, winter doldrums. You're gonna hop on over to Australia, and you're gonna be in the bright, sunny sunshine. That's with a lot of places, of course, but um, yeah, Australia someday, someday soon. So, what are some of your dream vacations? 
Jim says, I've never done a tropical, all-inclusive beach vacation where you just relax and get served all day. I have done that numerous times. I've done a lot of all-inclusives to say the DR, Dominican Republic, which I'm very afraid to go back to now with everything that's going on there. But I've been to Cancun. Uh, Joe and I took our first cruise. Now, I know Jim has been on a lot of cruises. I guess he doesn't consider that the same thing. He said, I have a lot of nice vacations, but I've always wanted to just sit on an all-inclusive resort, kid-free for a week, and soak up the sun. Yeah, it's funny because that's mostly what I've done when I've gone on, you know, big vacations. Dennis says, it's not a dream anymore. Now the dream is buying property in Croatia. I know Dennis and his wife Anastasia just went to Croatia for, I believe it was like 10 days. They had an amazing time. They documented everything, everything, and I got to follow them along. Beautiful country. Betsy says Hawaii and Italy. Chrissy says Bora Bora French Polynesia. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Chrissy, take me with you. Linda says Portugal. Kim says Tahiti. I've not heard any bad things about Tahiti. Dawn says Ireland. Ireland, always a popular choice. Melissa says I've always wanted to go to Italy with my mom. Michelle says Italy, Paris, Hawaii, Switzerland. Jody says, I've wanted to go to Greece. Uh, Spain is a close second. I was there as a toddler, but that doesn't count. I agree. Another one for Tahiti. Gail says Tahiti. Gypsy Chick, who I happen to know her real name is Kelly, so I'm outing you, is Switzerland and Hawaii. And uh, Joseph. Hmm, that name looks familiar. I think that's my husband. Two weeks in Greece and Italy. Hmm. It's weird. I brought this up when he posted on that last night. I said, since when do you want to go to Italy? He's like, when have I not wanted to go to Italy? I'm like, when we've talked about Europe, you're like, I don't want to go to Ireland. I'm like, I don't really, you know, that's not the first place I want to go. And so that's when we had compromised on Greece. I was like, I'll go to Italy. I have no problem going to Italy. Please. Let me eat my weight in pasta. Absolutely. So there are some of your dream vacations. So hopefully everybody's putting a little bit away each week or thinking about it, you know, maybe in the distance, maybe, you know, don't wait till you retire, though, people. That's too long. It's too long. Make plans. Put a little aside, $5 a week. You'll be able to go in four or five years, which is hopefully a long way, you know, a big difference from your retirement date. Take advantage of things now while you can. It's, uh, life's too short, people. Absolutely. And it could be gone just like that. So live for today. Plan for the future, but live for today. So moving on to my blog post, I'm going to continue the first part of this week, at least, with still some more behaviors to adopt because I don't feel like I got everything in that I really need to. So I started out with a picture of a quote that says, you will only begin to heal when you let go of past hurts, forgive those who have wronged you, and learn to forgive yourself for your mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. I think forgiving yourself is probably the most important thing. We've all done things that we are not proud of, things that we wish we had never done. And as long as you learn from that situation and don't repeat it, or keep repeating it, it's okay. We're human. Everybody makes mistakes. But when it comes to forgiving others, yeah, this is one I really struggle with. I am a self-confessed grudge holder, and it is a hard habit to break. I know it's not doing me any good, but most of my grudges are, you know, over what I see as a slight or a mistreatment that I didn't feel that I deserved. Now, we never deserve to be treated badly, but sometimes we understand why the other person is upset with us or why a certain situation happened, and at least it makes sense to us. We're not sitting there scratching our heads like, what What happened? Why is this happening to me? Because I'm still dealing with two major issues right now, and I think they're pretty major. One issue is with my mom and the actions she put into place to occur after her death. Uh, The other is the loss of my most recent job. I don't understand why either has played out the way that it has. I am proud to say that I have grown so much on my path here that I don't let it affect my daily life. I'm happy. 
I'm good.